here I'm going to open the SNP report. And you see we have about half a million SNPs. And by just applying some basic filtering, I can narrow this down to about 90,000 SNPs. And another filter I want to apply is max coding feature distance. I'll enter 25 here, and now SeekMan is only showing me SNPs that occur within 25 bases upstream or downstream of a CDS or Exxon feature. If I check the box next to show code on bases and distance to feature, SeekMan will include some additional columns that show the code on change caused by the SNP and the distance to the nearest coding feature. You'll notice that for SNPs that occur within a coding feature, the impact column, which is new in laser gene 10, shows what impact the SNP will have on the gene. Here, coding changes are shown in magenta. If I'm only interested in SNPs that result in a coding change, I can use this dropdown to show coding change SNPs only. And now everything in the impact column is magenta. I can use the same dropdown to show only SNPs that result in a nonsense change. We can look at any of these SNPs in more detail by double clicking. This opens the alignment view, and here we can see that this SNP occurs in the middle of a CDS feature and is a heterozygous change from a C to a G that would result in a premature stop codon. I'm going to switch this filter back to showing coding and non-coding SNPs, and then sort on the coding feature distance column to see SNPs that occur upstream or downstream of a coding sequence shown in magenta and orange. Notice that many of these SNPs show splice in the new splice column, which indicates whether a SNP occurs in a splice site. This SNP, which is shown in orange, is three bases to the right of a coding sequence on the top strand. And if we look at this SNP in the alignment view, we can confirm that it is to the right of a CDS and located in the five prime splice site recognition sequence.